Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Glad you could join us again for another episode of Celebrating Act 2. I'm here with my fabulous partner, John Coleman, and our amazing, amazing, not only Hollywood historian, but friend, Manny Pacheco. We've, we've known each other for years and years and years, and the stories never get old about the old Hollywood. I, so I think you added. I think you added a year too many, but yes, we have been friends for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are our go-to guy, Manny. There's no question about it. You have details. You remember details most people have forgotten. Um, and I have. Uh, speaking of details, I have a question for you that only you might be able to answer. Mm. And that is, I was thinking about all our all the classic. Um, Hollywood heroes, uh, the famous actors and actresses, uh, Clark Gable, uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Spencer Tracy, people like that. We all know their their best films, their best work, their their iconic movies. You know the ones they won Academy Awards for. What I don't think anybody remembers, and I don't. That's my question for you is their last films. Now, hmm. you know, Spencer Tracy hmm. lived a long life, made a lot of films, unlike, let's say, Marilyn Monroe, whose life was cut short and only made, by comparison, you know, she had, an, if had she lived another, uh, lived, she could have done another 20 years of movies, but they would have changed. Those roles would have changed, particularly for a woman. So my question for you is, people like Spencer Tracy, um, when they got older and they were still making movies, were their roles changing? Did they change? Yeah. Well, in Spencer Tracy's uh, case, it was um, he was fortunate to collaborate with uh, Stanley Kramer. It was a great collaborative uh, relationship they had in the last eight years of Spencer Tracy's life. And um, they made some great films, beginning with Inherit the Wind. They also made Judgment in Nuremberg. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Um, they they parted ways temporarily for a couple of years, and not because of any problems, but because of Spencer Tracy's health. It had declined after 1963. He had to turn down a number of roles, including The Cincinnati Kid. He was asked to play a villain on Batman, turned it down unless he could make sure that Batman dies at the end of the episode. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Stanley Kramer came back and uh, along with Catherine Hepburn, uh, actually put up a, a part of their, um, their um, salary to uh, insure Spencer Tracy in case he died before they finished the production of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Oh, really? So that was his last film. That was his wow. last film, and um, it was a great film for him. Um, sure he was nominated was. for an Academy Award. Of course, he was nominated posthumously. Yeah. He had died just after the, the, the filming had stopped, and it was a great way to go out. I mean, it was an oh. easy role for him to, 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 to put out, and it was, it was just typical Tracy. It was just a, magnific a magnificent piece. Yeah, yeah. I one of my favorite Spencer Tracy's movies is uh, Bad Day at Black Rock. Where did that fall in his career? Was that earlier? Well, that was a mid '50s movie. That's when he was, you know, you could see his aging. That's when his hair went from, you know, that uh, that brown, that really nice curly brown look to um, that tight white haired look. Uh, 1955. He died in 1967. So yeah, it was in the later part of his career. Yeah, but not not the end of his career. Right yeah. now, and of course, of course, Marilyn Monroe. Yes, was you know she was that hot thing, mm -hmm. um, and she died, you know, so young. She never had a chance to m move into more mature roles. No, but you know, her last film, ironically, was the last film as well of Clark Gable. They made a film together finally. Really. Uh, Yes, and um, it was written by her husband, Arthur Miller, uh, uh, directed by John Huston. Okay. It was the, I, the Misfits, and it, star it had a great the cast. The Misfits, sure. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. It had a great cast with um, Thelma Ritter and uh, also uh, 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 Montgomery Clift, Eli Wallach. Yes. And by the, end of the, by the end of the decade, four of them were dead. I mean, it, it, it's really amazing that so many of them passed from this film. 
And it, it, it literally, Clark Gable died 10 days after the making of this film. It required a strenuous amount of stunt work, which he did all of his stunts, including, you know, uh, roping cattle in the middle of a, a Nevada desert in 105 to 110 degree heat. And, and he had a heart attack and he died. Now, Marilyn Monroe was in the process of making another movie the following year with Dean Martin called Something's Gotta Give. And she was just being difficult as she normally is. And she had been replaced by, um, by Lee Remick. But Dean Martin uh, refused to work with Lee and said that if we don't bring back Marilyn, we're not making the film. Well, wow. unfortunately, she passed in, in, before that could happen. Uh, she was also set to uh, co-star in o o What a Way to Go, that great movie that featured just everybody. Paul Newman, yeah. Robert Mitchum, Gene Kelly, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Robert Cummings and Dean Martin, and she was replaced because she had passed with, um, she had re been replaced with uh, Shirley MacLaine. Now, you know, Manny, mm -hmm. those films that you just mentioned of Mara, that she was going to do had she lived, they seem to be typical Marilyn Monroe uh, films. Yes. The Misfits, on the other That's hand, right, right. I thought, uh, I didn't realize it was her last film, but I thought that film, she was playing a more mature, yes. um, not blonde bombshell, more mature woman, really fascinating. I got to see her act, mm -hmm. you know, not just do comedy, but act. And I thought that was a hint at what might she have done had mm -hmm. she lived. Well, she was very much ingrained in the method school of acting. Uh, her husband was a method writer. And she wanted to do more important films. She excelled in like the Seven Year Itch and you know yes. uh, yeah. all of these little comedies that she did. But she really wanted to do more stuff like The Misfits, and she was not happy that she was giving some, given something's got to give and, and what a way to go. She, you're right. She wanted to go in that direction, and I think she would have. I think she would have been very successful in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Now another so, actor that I, I would be remiss not mentioning that really had an incredible finish is John Wayne. John Wayne uh, in the 1950s had made a terrible film uh, out in the middle of the, the Nevada test where the Nevada atomic test site had been t taken. And along with the, uh, the rest of the cast, which included Agnes Moorhead, Susan Hayward, P Pedro Armanderas, and directed by Dick Powell, all contracted cancer because they, they got radiation during the filming of, of, of this film in the mid 50s. Oh. Most of them had died. Uh, by the late 60s, early 70s. But John Wayne contracted the cancer and found out about it during the making of the film in the 60s uh, in harm's way. And yet he, he was going to live another 14 years. But he knew he, his time on this earth was going to be short. And in 1976, three years before he passed, he had the courage to make a film about a, an aging uh, cowboy who is dying of cancer? Yes, the shoot is a gunslinger. Yeah. Yes, the shootist is a remarkable film yeah. that really talks about the mortality of man. Something that he really never uh, really breached or approached during his career. Yeah. But it was a remarkable movie that featured uh, Lauren Bacall, Ron Howard, Scatman Carruthers, Hugh O'Brien. Just a, a litany of great, great stars. Richard Boone was in it as well. So he yeah. brought out his friends. Yeah, he was and, like uh, always the invincible tough guy. Yeah, and if yeah. You, you'll notice a few things where you know he's not invincible. Like when he gets off a horse, they never let him get off a horse onto the ground. He actually gets on a, on a pedestal to get off of a horse or gets on the horse using the pedestal. Yeah. That shows that he was really in a lot of pain, even as his character was portrayed with a lot of pain. Right. And the shootist is a remarkable way to go. He he really could not have made another film. I think that that would have been really a disservice to what he was trying to present in, in the shootist. And he should have been nominated for an Oscar as well. He was really good in this film. Yes, he was. Everybody was. Yeah. Yeah. Humphrey Bogart <laughs> made a film that I think was really good. It, it the, you know that people don't talk about it the way they talk about the African Queen or the Treasure of the Sierra Madre. But The Harder They Fall was a really good film, very film noir, had some great actors. Rod Steiger plays the villain in this thing. And it's basically about a, a, a guy who is writing a, a, a story, a, a newspaper story about the, uh, the influence of the mafia or the mob in boxing. So it was a really hard hitting story 
well done, uh, well well presented, and it was his last film. Uh, I mean, people, if you've never, if you, if you really want to complete Humphrey Bogart's career, the harder they fall is worth watching. How about um, uh, one of my favorites, Gary Cooper? I, yeah. All I can think when you say Gary Cooper, all I can think of is High Noon and that music. <laughs> and of course, but, Sergeant but he had a long career. He wasn't a young man when he made High Noon either. Oh, yeah, but you know when you, you say whether they were old. You got to realize that Spencer Tracy was 67 when he died. Um, uh, 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 Clark Gable was 59 when he died, and Gary Cooper was just 60 when he died. I, I mean, amazing as that sounds. And and Gary Cooper had a great career, but by the mid 1950s, he was just making films that were not up to snuff. I think after High Noon, his films definitely took a dive. Uh, the Court Martial of Billy Mitchell, Love in the Afternoon. These films just aren't very good, and neither was his last film, The Naked Edge. Oh. I, you've never heard, yeah, you've never heard. <laughs> It was a pedestrian <laughs> drama. It was. It featured Deborah Carr. Who, I mean, it, it, it's not a bad film, but I mean, Gary Cooper made way better films. Yeah. It was just. It was yeah. just a. It was just a good film. It wasn't a great film, and I'm sure you probably maybe have seen it once and wasn't even that impressed. Yeah, if so, I saw it, I forgot it. Believe me. Yeah, unfortunately. What about another? There's another uh, really uh, uh, tragic. Uh, uh, there must have been a last film that is of some note. With uh, somebody who had a tragic young death, uh, James Dean. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, James Dean only made three films. His third really? film. Only, again, only three? Only three films. Uh, yeah. Hmm. East of Eden, Rebel Without a Cause, and then his last film, which he was nominated for a second time for a, a, a Best Actor Award. And that's Giant. Giant, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, he had a lot of life in him. He got along with the people of Marfa, Texas, where it was filmed. He was very close friends to uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth had a knack for um, befriending young actors like Roddy McDowell and, um, and uh, um, Montgomery Clift. So James Dean and her were very close. Rock Hudson was in the film as well. Yep. And uh, he took off. Uh, after the completing of his scenes to go uh, do some racing. And on his way to a race, of course, as you know, driving his spider, uh, he crashed and he died. So Giant, again, was re released uh, after he died. And he oh. was nominated for an award after he died. Yeah, I didn't. You know, somehow I, I knew when you said uh, going through those three films, I knew Giant was James Dean's last film. But I didn't realize Rock Hus Hudson died after that. He, no, no, no. Rock Hudson didn't die after that. No, no. James Dean died after that. Oh, Rock oh, Hudson James Dean and his Rock, and Hudson, Hudson. Rock Hudson was just in the film. Okay. No, no. He Sorry. lived. He lived another twenty years. Um, you know, and there there are other actors that I like to mention that maybe they're not as iconic, but they they went in very strange ways. And the and the best example is Peter Finch. Oh yeah. You know, Peter, Peter Finch was this great British actor who um, wasn't you know, on par with like Peter O'Toole or Richard Burton or Richard Harris, but he was a really good English actor. And, and he, he and let's face it, Manny, he, he was mad as hell and he wasn't going to take it anymore. He found this role that was just <laughs> perfection. Network was about as good as it gets. Yes. And, and, you know, he, he went on the, you know, by then the mid seventies, he was going on this tour and he was, you know, making sure that people knew to vote for him if they were a member of the Academy. And he made an appearance on the Johnny Carson show. And as he left the Carson show, literally on his way to his limo, he had a fatal heart attack in the parking lot and he died. No. Yes. Are you, are you telling me that um, Network was his last film? It was his last film. Is wow. that right? Yeah. Wow. And, you know, you know he had another good number of films in him because he yeah. he had just hit his stride i mean he was going to be a big star like you george Steele was in the 70s you know wow. he could be one of those 1970s iconic stars but it was just yeah. not to be yeah. Yeah. you know I'm, this I, is a, this is all the kind of stuff i'm jumping in i'm jumping in at this time uh <laughs> maddie you uh you're an expert not only in old forgotten hollywood but you obviously are uh, because uh, eventually Hollywood today will be forgotten sometime and we expect you to live forever. <laughs> uh, but uh, you sort of bring up an interesting um, uh, thought about how many P 
people today, we maybe or have recently of, of current stars watched in their last film. Yes, uh, and, as well. So absolutely, yeah. Chadwick Boseman is probably the yeah. best example of that. I mean, he he was really set to do some more uh, uh, Panther films. You bet. He, he, but of course, you know, he really wanted, like Marilyn Monroe, wanted to be considered a serious star, and he appeared in. His two last films last year in, in The Five Bloods, it was a small role, but a very important role, but real genius in uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Mm -hmm. What a tour de force. Boy, could he have lived just another five years, ten years. I am telling you, he had so much acting yep. chops in him. A remarkable yeah. actor, and so sad to see him go. Well, they said that same thing about Keith Ledger. If Keith you Ledger after yes. Keith Ledger did Batman. He Heath Ledger, like like the oh, can the Heath bar. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget him now. <laughs> well, he hasn't forgotten the role. Yeah, Heath well, Ledger. You, you know was, what? I uh, think that th this is a uh, this has really been great, and I I know that there are lots of ones that are forgotten what their last roles are. But I wonder whether or not we have maybe we'll do a combined one in the future of the last. Uh, pictures that uh, famous directors did, like John Ford, uh, mm -hmm. and some of the really great uh, uh, directors of the of the past. Yeah, you know, the directors having last films as well as actors. I mean, that's no. Um, that's, right. Maybe we could do that we'll in see. another episode. Sure, sure, that would be great. Well, Marty, this has been absolutely fascinating as always, and, and a lot uh, of fun. Well, that too, uh, and um, you got to, which is not very hard got to correct us on a lot of things we have almost right okay and then you're always able to bail us out and give us the correct information and we have no shame so we humbly accept that anything we're about to say about old hollywood may be wrong and you'll help us out so thank you again for a fascinating uh walk through last films thank you Yes, uh, that that uh, the swan songs of of, of great actors is is wor definitely worth the chat. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.